All right. We got the Kerr engine store here. Leads us to the Ford lower lobe. Down here is avionics and uh, aircraft systems. Come up to the main deck. Turn left. Up here you have the galley and the flight attendant section where we prepare meals in flight. And then here is the uh, NCA or National Command Authority office suite. We have communications and accommodations for uh, VIP travel. We support the SecDef. You can see he has his own closet dressing area, bathroom. Come through the galley, you can see we have all the basics, oven, coffee maker, fridges, refrigerator, freezer, sink. We can prep all kinds of meals for as many people as travel. Through here is the conference room where we can hold meetings in flight. Then here's the press area. Uh, we hold meetings in here, briefings. You'll see uh, his staff and whatnot will join in here for briefings. This is the battle staff area where we have a planning staff for SecDef. As you can see, it's a converted 747-200, and uh, some of the stuff we kept from when it was originally built, like the overhead bins. This one is a 74 model. Hold about 35 people in here, about 17 in the press area, nine seats at the conference table. These are uh, printers and copiers in order to uh, you have access for computer stations, workstations, so they can do anything. It's a working office. They have all kinds of telephone, computer, printer, copy, fax, anything you'd need in order to conduct business. It's at their disposal here. It's approximately 5,000 square feet of office space. What you see there, those are the flap hinges. As the flaps come down, those canoes help support the flaps as they come down, allow us to slow our approach speeds. On the grid? And the grid, oh, on the wire is a uh, EMP shielding that allows for electromagnetic pulse. So we step into here, this is the comm support area. This is where we allow all that communication for the staff to do their planning. 
we bring them back, uh, we provide the capability from back here. We hold about 35 communications operators. In here you'll see mostly voice operation to allow them to make phone calls, faxes, talk. Kind of a step up from your AT&T operator. <laughs> Back through here, we allow uh, all data transmissions come from back here. Um, talk to anyone in the world. If they have a phone, we can we can talk to them. So from anywhere, anywhere, and the key is right here. This is called tech control. This is where they monitor and control all the systems of the uh, communications and the back end. So all cooling, uh, pressurization, all radios, all electrics, all goes through these points here. One of the interesting things is our controllers here are not only operators, but they're also maintainers. So they are qualified to fix any of the equipment that they uh, have a problem with. They can get back and they can actually do the maintenance on it themselves. And then finally back here we have one last operator position. This is for SHF operation or super high frequency communications. Um, it's a uh, spectrum of the communications. Uh, you have anywhere from low frequency or LHF to HF, which is high frequency, ultra high frequency, very high frequency to super high frequency. So they provide that capability, which gets us around the world communication. So as you see here, we got 35 individuals all spread out, working different sections, organized by one officer back here. And uh, we fly them a lot of times in shifts to provide our uh, alert mission, which is a 24-7, 365-day rotating mission. So the extra crew members will sit back here, and then once again just stow their stuff in the original overhead bins. Fifty-seven cases of MREs on board our airplane, in case you get hungry. And then we've got uh, 14 bunks available uh, for in-flight crew rest, so that we can do our long missions. Final two areas are the original uh, flight attendant jump seats. On our crew is made up of essentially communications operators, pilots, navigator, flight engineer, flight attendant, and then our battle staff is a joint section which is not part of the first acts. They're uh, part of the NAOC. What I'll do is I'll take you from here and we'll go downstairs to the lower lobe section, which originally a 747 cargo airplane would have been for bulk cargo and aft cargo. We've converted it into uh, more aircraft systems are down there, but also our trailing uh, antenna wire. What we can do is we can trail an antenna behind the aircraft up to about five miles behind. And what that does is it sends a uh, sends a signal around at very low frequency which you can see right here it looks like speaker wire sends a signal two and a half times the the earth about 20,000 watts 
It's trailed out by a metal basket similar to what a drogue would be on an air refueler, um, pulled out by that. And it's operated from this section here. Just watch your head on that uh, latch. These are the original aft bulk uh, loading doors. So cargo would be brought in and slid back into here and put in in your uh, suitcases and stuff on a 747 would have been up in the front load. What you do is you basically have a bunch of gauges here where you're watching the pressurization, uh, the stress on the drogue, making sure that it stays within tolerances. And then you have a periscope there that you, looks down the back of the airplane so you can actually see the drogue as it trails behind you. And then it's a coordination from this position via interphone to 163 feet in front of you up to me in the pilot position so that I'm flying the proper airspeed in the right airspace in order to allow this five miles of wire to be trailed behind the aircraft. the other door. So that was the aft bolt door. This is the aft cargo door, which would have brought cargo then in this direction, which we can still use for loading, should we desire it. This isn't as exciting. All you have in here is uh, electronics equipment that power the airplane systems. There are nine doors. We have nine exit doors. The reason there's not ten, there's ten on a normal 747, is we have the other door, as you can see, blocked by that uh, equipment. We don't carry enough to require all ten doors. We don't carry enough people. show you behind this before we've modernized to screens we originally had uh, projections and a slide actual no kidding 35 millimeter slide projector and there's a position in there for a technician to sit there and as you push this podium slide light it lights up in there and they hit the next slide so it used to show next slide so you'd hit the button and it would cue the technician in there to sit and 
key to the next slide. So it's kind of historic, kind of one of our original. I'm sorry, he's working in there. Now it's all plasma screen, so. Yep. Now we'll go up to the most exciting part, which is up front. <laughs> Excuse me, guys. It's the original spiral staircase of the 747 and the original chandelier. You even have the little rope comes out of here tell people not to be up in first class because this was the first class section. Uh, it doesn't get utilized, but that's still the original. What you have back here is our uh, upper rest area, which we hold our maintenance uh, personnel that we carry on board, and then crew rest facilities here. All the way to the back, we have two more bunks back here. We have a lavatory up here, and then we have the cockpit. It's a little busy, as you can see, they're doing maintenance work. Can I actually get better shots when we come out later?